Hello, Chris Downham here from Rise Urban Yoga. I am on day four of my five day water fast. So I shall be, it's Thursday now and last eight on Sunday and I shall be breaking my fast on Friday evening and apparently some sort of vegetable broth and then maybe a juice. If I overdo that, I will, my son will be screaming and I'll be very upset about it because so far this has been just amazing. Uh, I thought it was going to be much more of a challenge than it was. I think it's because I've gone into, into it in very much the my, right mindset. I'm not seeing this as a punishment to myself, although I do enjoy the challenge. I'm seeing this just as a gift to my body. Uh, after 44 and a bit years of eating, to have a prolonged period of not eating um, is you know, no bad thing at all. Which brings me to the whole thing about eating and, and not eating. Uh, we we get released into our body at certain periods of day, and there's loads of studies about this. I'm not going to go into at all too much about the science thing. There's people who do that much better than me. Um, I just believe what they say and I'm experimenting upon myself. But during the day, so at like eight in the morning, half twelve uh, in the afternoon, and then sort of half five in the evening, your body naturally secretes more ghrelin. Um, ghrelin, G-H-R-E-L-I-N, research, it's a hormone that um, effectively makes you feel hungry. Um, and it, what it's doing, it's reminding you to eat. Because if we didn't, because our body doesn't need to eat all the time, if we didn't release that hormone, we might just forget. Uh, and obviously long term, that would have consequences. Uh, and again, I think I've said this before, this is not about not eating. This is about health, it's about abundance, it's about your body repairing itself. It's not a starvation diet at all. Um, so your body naturally releases these, these hormones, but it's based on the routines that you have set up. So you can interrupt the release of ghrelin just by not eating on demand. Your body will then adapt to that and say, okay, we don't eat at breakfast, at lunch, at tea, because that's not a natural thing that's been created. It used to be that ghrelin will have been released maybe every couple of days or something like that. It's only because we get in, we've got into this new, you know, the marketeers of food have done a wonderful job telling us we should eat a lot more than we, we should and we need to. Um, so we can definitely interrupt that. And intermittent fasting and fasting does that wonderfully. So if you go into a fast and you've never fasted before and you've not tried intermittent fasting and you've not tried interrupting that ghrelin cycle, you're going to feel hunger a lot more than say I'm feeling hunger because I did these 40 days of one meal a day. I interrupted that, that ghrelin hormone secretion thing, which, which is good. The other thing that I think, um, and I'm just doing more and more research about this, so I'm absolutely convinced that intermittent fasting and autophagy is a wonderful thing for humanity. I think it can cure illnesses, it can prevent illnesses, it can get you to your ideal weight, not necessarily take you below your ideal weight, because I think homeostasis will kick in to create the perfect version of you physically. Um, but if your mindset is all about three meals a day, you will really, really struggle. Um, so a bit like running an ultra marathon, when you've run a hundred kilometers, Suddenly a five kilometer run doesn't seem very long anymore or a 10 kilometer run or even a half marathon or a, half, or a marathon might not feel a long way compared to what you have run previously. So when I go back into my normal eating uh, and that's going to be sort of a, on either an 18, six, so 18 hours, not eating, six hours eating type situation, I'm not going to feel like I'm punishing myself because I know now I've done five days, currently four days, not eating. So I know my body can cope. I don't have to panic. My ghrelin um, secretion has altered. Uh, my mind has altered. I know now I have broken the marketer's myth of three meals a day. And I just feel that feels so empowering to me and so much more headspace created about not having to think all the time about what we're going to have for breakfast, what we're going to have for lunch. But, you know, I, I, it's not going to have changed my love for food. And I will get more pleasure from food by eating less. I mean, I'm going to eat. I'm, I'm not going to go into massive calorie deficit. It's too easy to get your calories. Uh, it's just going to be nutrient-packed, wonderful food, but eating, eating in a more limited time of day. And, and I, I'm convinced that is going to keep me at my best levels. Uh, so quickly on to my results. I'll show you the spreadsheet tomorrow. Uh, I'm only going to be doing... Um, 
the checks in the mornings now basically because I'm running out of sticks and it takes like three days uh, testing strips and it takes three days for them to come. Uh, so my weight has uh, reduced again to 67.2 when I started it like 70 so before I, at new year's i was about 74 so i've lost like a stone over the last two weeks and that, that's a lot and i'm not um saying that is a healthy level of weight loss my body does lose weight quickly uh, as i said i think in another video i'm getting my dna test results back soon and it might be that i am genetically disposed to losing weight pretty quickly and putting weight back on fairly quickly so uh, but we'll see um, so I'm not trying to say that this is a way to lose loads of weight quickly although that's certainly what, what's happened for me my hydration levels are, are even higher than they were so 60% is about the hydration level you want to be at uh, I started at 59 went up to 60 I'm at 61 now so it's not water fat uh, physically I've got uh, I can see quite a lot of abdominals now and a strip down the middle which is nice um, so I, yeah, I appreciate that. Again, that wasn't the main reason for it, but it's, uh, I feel good for it. I am looking at myself uh, topless in the mirror more than I previously would have. Uh, so other things just to let you know, uh, this apple cider vinegar, uh, raw, organic, with the mother. You can get this in any supermarkets. I, I just buy this in bulk because I use it all the time. Uh, a pint of this, a couple of telluble spoons with this, Great for fat burning, fabulous for a cessation of hunger, absolutely fine to have on a fast, should be part of your, this should be something you have every day. Your life will be healthier with it. Uh, the other thing is, last night I did um, flex yoga, which is fairly strong. I did Pilates, uh, again, which was fairly strong. Uh, and then I did uh, meditation all at rise, which is just wonderful. And all of those, they felt like they were at a different level, but I did feel a little bit of cramp in a couple of a couple of the moves. So, sea salt. Just put a little bit of salt, half a tablespoon in a pint of water. Uh, that's quite important. Your salt levels um, do decrease really rapidly to start with in a fast, and then again homeostasis kicks in and they um, go steady. On my ketone, not my ketone, my blood glucose levels. Interestingly, my blood glucose levels came down. They started to go up a little bit, uh, and that's because uh, because I did some. I went for a little run today as well because I've done a bit more, not high intensity, but I've done a bit more exercise. My body's trying to find um, some more sugar, so it does have a look for any sugar that has been stored longer term in my liver. Uh, and release that into my bloodstream, apparently. Uh, again, do more research about that, but that's where I'm up to that. Uh, and then the other um, treat for me today is I am going to do an enema. A water enema, you've got water or coffee enemas. Dead easy. Uh, use filtered water, not tap water. Uh, takes two litres. Tube up the bum, tiny, thin tube, so let's not panic about that. And... Um, Put it in, stop, massage it around a bit, and then hop on the loo. And make sure you're not going out for at least two or three hours afterwards. Because <laughs> and do not risk a fart in public or or anywhere else for at least a good few hours, because that could go terribly wrong. Uh, but all in all, I, I'm feeling really good. Oh, sleep-wise, um, wacky dreams again. Fourth night of wacky dreams, which is weird. Um, sex drive, which is normally very high, has reduced. Uh, a bit. I think that's mainly because if you were in a starvation mode, your body would be saying, hang on lad, let's go hunting for food um, or gathering food in my in my way. And that, that's not be uh, trying to procreate right now. Uh, again, if you're wanting to make babies when food's um, scarce, then that's probably not the best time for, for a lady to be doing that as well. So that would be entirely natural. And it's lovely to understand that side of things as well. Maybe not lovely for an update on my sex drive, but there you go, you just had one, uh, usually high. Uh, and that's about it. I just think it's it's a fabulous thing. Record the information, it's a great experiment. Really excited uh, to move on to the next stage of it as well. Happy to answer any questions. Message ends.